Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now, as we said in the last video when we done the lighting video, we now need to try and um, spruce up some of our enclosures. And as you can see here, they're all looking a little bit drab, a little bit dry. Um, so what we're gonna do, we are gonna do a temporary fix, which will just clean them up a little bit um, just so that I don't keep having um, murmurations every time I look at them because they're driving me mad at the moment. Look at that Versi. That is looking absolutely stunning under the lights. Very, very pretty. Now you can see in there that all the moss has died off. Everything is really, really dry at the moment. And this is another good thing actually. It's um, This highlights the fact that um, when we talk about verses in general, there's an awful lot of myth about verses and how how they should and should not be kept. And this a lot of this revolves around ventilation, um, humidity, and all this sort of stuff. And as we've shown here, these guys have been like this now for around about four months. So they've had it really, really dry. Now they've still got drinking water and everything else, and they will have relative room humidity, which in here at the moment is around about 60%. So it just goes to show, you know, although they do like a higher humidity, they will function under a lower one. So it's it's really, really important. It's something that's um, you know, it's worth highlighting the fact that people get really hung up with the humidity with verses, especially when they're small. Most people that lose their verses when they're very, very tiny is because they're keeping them far too wet. They need to be literally just on that point of moisture, very, very little. It's, it's, it's difficult to explain, but it wants to be just on the point of being damp. Um, but that does not mean wet. And this is where the problem lies. Now, as, as regards to um, ventilation, we've kept them in all manner of ways. We've also kept them in sealed tubs with no ventilation whatsoever, and they've done equally as well. The key point is getting your humidity in that enclosure correct. Now, one of the reasons that I believe that we've gone down the road of, you know, these guys needing um, high humidity, which in turn leads to high ventilation, is because People within the hobby over all these years have never grasped the fundamentals of what humidity truly is. And the reason they keep banging in about having such high ventilation, holes in everything. I mean, you've only got to go on Facebook and you'll see there people have got tubs. There's more holes than there is tub. You know, they absolutely plastered it with holes. It looks like a sieve, you know. The reason this is happening is because in the past, people have kept them far too wet. So they need all of them holes to try and allow some of the ventilation to, to allow some of that humidity to escape. Now, as soon as the humidity escapes, they then start plugging in more water to try and keep that high humidity. So as you can see there, it's a very, very vicious circle. Now we keep all of our um, AVIX relatively dry so on the outside it's dry but down here we keep it damp and this is giving up that humidity through the soil and it comes up through the air if you can see humidity you've got it far too wet it's as simple as that so we keep this damp but we keep this up here dry and they work really really well and then you don't need to worry so much about ventilation. There's plenty of uh, enclosures on the market that have very, very poor ventilation. You know, they've not got much. And I think we brushed on this a little while ago in one of the videos where we were saying about ventilation is only as good as the airflow in your room. If you've not got airflow in your room, your ventilation isn't going to be very good at all. Now with the, uh, the exoterras that we've got here, they have ventilation here, and they have a complete mesh roof. I like the complete mesh roof. I think it's, it's really cool. It, it allows me to control things much better. Um, but 
this is the only airflow is through here and out here and it's not drawing there isn't much being drawn through here so you might as well say there is very very little ventilation within this enclosure it's all up here so what we are doing is we are using the dampness here because it's in a glass sealed box it is the warmth is making it evaporate because we've got the mesh top so the mesh top is giving us the um, the open air into the room the heat caused by the glass because in effect in a warm room a glass tank is in effect a greenhouse and that's how it works so it's actually slightly warmer generally in there than it is out here especially if you've got dampness in here so just that degree higher will enable this to work its way out and evaporate out of here because the heat sorry girl the heat is actually being drawn through it's the heat and the moisture they work together and this is this is how it's working now um, we have another one here this is a this is a tarantula room enclosure uh, now this is a spider that came in in this container so we've left it in it um, but with these guys they've got even less in the way of ventilation now if we take the lid off of this hopefully she won't disappear there we go if we take the lid off that that there we go you can see it there that is the sole ventilation on these enclosures and that is perfectly adequate you don't need any more than that you know if you've got like um, a smaller thing like that it just means that you need to be more in control of the water that you're allowing into your enclosure the enclosure isn't the problem it's the watering the watering is the issue so what we're going to do now we're going to run through some of these we've got a bit of moss um, unfortunately i left it out in the sun and i didn't keep it wet so it's gone a little bit it's okay it's gone a little bit yellow but as soon as we water this and get it under the lights this will turn back to green so it should be fine so we're going to start with an easy one we're going to give this one here a quick going over a quick clean um i need me box which i forgot to get out we just need a rubbish box that's it all we need is a rubbish box really this is just to get rid of this old soil and stuff so what we're going to do rather than do a complete rehouse we are literally just going to have a bit of a spruce up so we're going to get this out as you can see this is absolutely useless not very good at all now so we got rid of that there's no need to clean all the soil out the soil's fine all we're going to do is we're just going to rough it up a little bit our spider is behind here we're just going to loosen that up a little bit that's it that's enough and then we can get our piece of moss there we go here's our bit of moss it's not the best looking piece of moss but it will be fine it will be okay so we're gonna go better that way around now unfortunately i did leave it out and the sun's got to it i thought it was going to be in the shade but it it didn't really work out that way we'll leave that like that that's all we're going to do nothing any more than that and then we're going to give it a good soak down now this is another advantage of having um, the mesh top is it allows us to give things like our moss when we first put it in a really really good soaking and it's not going to affect anything fill up our water bowl so we're going to give it a real good soak Yeah, we've got our razor blade here, so we're going to quickly go over the glass 
and that is all it takes. So what we will do, in time, when the room is a little bit straighter, and we have a little bit more time, we will rehouse these entirely. So all we're using is just straightforward tap water. We don't need to be getting fancy. Can you hear that in the background, guys? We all know what that is. I'm going to put that on there. Clean the front. There you go. There you go. One very straightforward, simple, quick rehouse. When I say rehouse, it's a, a refurb rather than a rehouse. Now some of these bits and pieces in here have been in here a while, so we can look at changing them all out. But where we're trying to play catch up at the moment, we are literally just looking at sprucing things up, making them a little bit better. And this is the quickest and easiest way to do it. All right. Now what we can do to help it out a little bit, because the moisture substrate is so dry, we can give that a bit of a soak first. And you can see how dry it is by the way the water sits on it. Look at that. It just sits on it. Now don't forget, we've got a drainage layer in the bottom of this. You might be able to see that there. And look at that, that water hasn't gone down into it yet. Here it comes, it's slowly starting to work its way through now. So again, the drainage layer gives us the flexibility. Makes life an awful lot easier. So we'll get another piece of moss. We've got a few odds, odds, and, odds and sods bits here, so we can put all that in there and just be like a bit of a patchwork quill. Interesting to see how. The moss, when it's out in the room light, it looks green. When it's in here, it actually looks completely white. So that's quite an interesting thing. All right, we're gonna clean all the muck off the glass again. Now you'd have remembered if you've seen some of our maintenance videos, this is pretty much what we do just to keep our tanks looking nice. Now you don't need to worry too much as well. It's like the only, we know none of these spiders here have got egg sacs or anything. So, she no, she's still sitting out there. You see, now we're sort of crashing and banging on walloping around and um, she's still sitting out there. She's steady as anything. And this is because these spiders, have become used to the regime that we have and they get used to the vibrations and everything that we create so me banging about in here doesn't really bother them when we get new spiders in they typically disappear run and hide they go away they go and hide somewhere but after a little while normally normally i suppose Within a month or so, they soon start to settle down and realize that it's just me mucking about, and they, they soon get back together. Now, as you can see now, look at that. Just having these two here, compared to these ones, we can see how much better it's looking already. We'll leave her for the moment, and we'll come and do this one. 
Now this is a Rufus in here. Uh, now then, that is typically going to be, this is a little bit different. So this is a Flamingo Chilus Rufus in here, and it's actually built its hide down in there. So it's um, gonna be tucked away underground. And it's probably at the base of this piece of bark here. So what we're gonna try and do now is we basically wanna put this back in the tank that it came out of, because we forgot it. Put that back in there. So what we want to do now is we want to try and get this out without destroying the entrance to our home, if we can. Got to be a little bit careful here as well because she might think the vibration is food. So we're literally just going to break that off. We don't want to jump it out onto our finger. There you go. We've taken it out and we've managed to leave, leave the entrance to her burrow in one piece just there, right in the middle of your camera there. That's the entrance there. You can just see it here. Interesting light how that, that plays on the camera. Rubbish, he says, rubbish. We will see how it comes out. Right. So what we're going to do with this one is we are going to add a little bit of soil. And get my right, I'm going to add a little bit of potting compost to this because there's very little in here. It's quite a shallow one. So we'll add a little bit more. Now don't forget, you guys at home can do this at any time. You know, you don't have to move out to, um, to do this. If you think your enclosures are looking a little bit tired, then there's nothing stopping you doing exactly what we're doing now. You don't have to rip them all out and start completely all over again. You know, it's just not necessary. Now this is, this actually looks like a really nice piece here. So it's gonna be interesting to see what it looks like when we put it in the enclosure. And I think, hmm. put that in there. Let's just put that in there. That'll hold that up as well now. You notice she hasn't come out and done anything to us. That'll help hold that up. Now one of the reasons we like to keep the glass really clean is because it tells us what our spider is doing. And by having filthy glass, we haven't got a clue. We don't know what they've been up to. We don't know whether they're, you know, if it's a spider that tends to hide away quite a bit, then um, often or not, the glass is the only telltale sign that we know that our spider is still alive. You know, it might just be one of those spiders that only comes out very, very infrequently. See, our Versi is still sitting there. I wonder if she's going to disappear when we actually come round to uh, opening up her enclosure. Mm, giving that a good drink. Quick squirt of water. Now, as we said earlier on, this is just just straightforward tap water. Yep, we're going to um, pop in and have a look at her in a minute. There we go. That's another one done.
Now I think um, we often see um, now this is this is our um, Heteroscoda maculata, the starburst baboon. Now this is a good example actually because we often get sort of questioned about like you know Cor, don't you worry about it. She's only sitting in there. She'll be behind there. So what we have to do is a little trick. We don't want to creep about. We want to let her know that we're out here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this little perch bit here. We're going to take that off. And we're just going to have a little tap on the bark there. So she knows it's only me. She won't be sweating too much now. Let me get me tub. So we've let her know that we're about. So she's not thinking of food. That's the idea. So we've taken that out completely. We don't want that anymore. Now we want to come up here. This is where you need to be a little careful because this is the entrance to a burrow here. And if we were creeping about, she might well have mistaken that bit of movement for um, food. And then we would have ended up having a starburst baboon impaled on the end of our finger. Now, another thing to remember with these spiders is because they're tucked away down there, they do burrow as well. So be careful when you're moving around in the soil here. She might have an entrance in the soil. And should you go stick your finger in it, you might end up wearing a baboon. So we have to bear in mind, think of your spider and how it lives and where it, where it might well be hiding and what it might well be doing. So again, we're going to soak the soil down a little bit. Now the only reason that we're giving this so much water is because these are tinder dry. They're very, very dry. So what we're doing is we're looking at just getting some water down into these clay balls. This is what we're after. And over time, we will build that up till we get to the humidity levels that we require, what we want. So that's the plan. That's, that's, what we, that's why we're doing this the way we're doing it. So we're going to get this little piece of moss here back in there. There'll be some little offs. Off tidy bits. There we go. Often, typically, they'll have an entrance at the side here. Always be aware. Make sure you um, you know where all the exits are. We'll clean our glass. Take that off of there. Do that. Quick squirt on the glass. Now you see, as we've been working away on here, you can you might be able to hear the vibration of when we're cleaning the glass. And that's because these tanks, one of them is sitting a bit funny. So it's actually moving. On the shelf. So what that's doing, that in itself is telling everyone what's going on. So they all know something's happening. They all know that there's no food. I mean, look at that. Don't that just look a hundred percent better already? I'm going to put that back in there. I um, I like to um, I like to put a branch in just like this because it just gives our spider somewhere to sit out, just like this verse is doing here. Just gives us somewhere to sit out and chill. And it's really nice because it get, it means that we can sit and observe them really nicely. Main thing to remember is when you're doing multiple tanks like this, when you take the branches out, remember to put them back in. Put that one there. Right. 
We'll leave her alone because she's still sitting there doing so well. She's not, not flustered at all. Let's try and do this really dirty one, shall we? Look at the state of that. Now, now this is an Avic Avic, and this is a typical Avic Avic. Look at look how thick that is. Look. Now, don't ever be worried about actually pulling down the web, because these guys are designed to be able to just build and build and build. You know, it's not the end of the world if their web disappears. They will literally just redo it all over again. Now, it's going to be a little bit tighter in here because she's literally behind here. You can just about see her legs. And because of all the web, it means when we try and take anything out, it's going to be hooked onto absolutely everything. There we go. We've managed it. We got it. Let me just move this. There we go. You are just trouble. You put it in my foot. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get our. What we're going to do now, this is probably going to pull it all out of the bottom, but we'll see how we go. Let me just be gentle. We can, we can normally get it out without disturbing our spider too much. Like I say, if it's got to go, it's got to go. You know, she will rebuild. There you go. She's just going to go up there. You notice how she's her, her posture and everything. She knows this isn't food. So she's behaving herself. We're going to add a little bit of soil to this one as well, just to give a little bit more. Don't that look really yucky? That looks horrible, doesn't it? All discoloured. So we get a bit of soil. Right, let's get a bit of this in here. You know, as we're doing all of this with our spiders still in in the space. They're being very well behaved. There we go. Just a little bit of that in there. You notice they're not running around, they're not fretting. They're all being very good. Right, so let's see what we can do here. Got another large piece of moss here. What we're going to do is we're going to square up the edges. I do sometimes wonder whether it's worth putting the moss in the small enclosures when it comes to things like our verses, because they do have a horrible habit of literally just burying everything in web. Yeah, completely covering everything. So we'll get our I'm going to clean back this glass. Now in a larger enclosure, we don't get so much of a problem with the Avix. It's because these are in 20 by 20 by 20s. So they literally web the whole thing. All right. You know, she's not bothered at all. We're we're not exactly being gentle here. We're making quite a bit of bit of a ruckus, really. All right, so now we're gonna soak everything down, fill up a water bowl.
And again, we can water this quite heavily. This is one of the benefits of having the mesh tops. Now I hear many of you, you know, are fearful of the mesh tops. We use them on everything. And we have no issues with them. Now what we're going to do now is, I'm very tempted to pull out that piece of horrible web. But because she's using that at the moment, she's actually hiding behind that. We're going to leave it there. Um, we're going to leave it there until she's sort of webbed up a bit extra. And then we'll, we'll remove it then. There you go. All right. Click on the glass. This is absolutely filthy. Look at that. This is not coming off quite so easily. Just as well. It's mucky as anything. You can hear it working away on there. So nice to see clean glass again. Yeah, they get used to it. There's a difference between nervous, haphazard banging about and banging around with a purpose. And they do get used to it. They, they seem to know. It's like, oh, well, it's maintenance day again. He's back. And there they are. Look at that. Don't that look just so much better? Nice, simple, simple job. Now, these are going to be harder to do, so we're not going to worry because this girl is actually going to be rehomed into an XO. She'll be coming out of here, so we're not going to worry about her. But we will give this one here a go. Give this a clean up. That's absolutely filthy. Um, this one is well and truly webbed in. So how we're we going to get this one out. There we go. As you can see, she's actually coming out to have a look, see what's going on. We will, um, as we said before, the lighting is a bit of an experiment, so it's going to be an interesting thing to see how it all comes out. All right. I can get back in there for a moment. I'm just going to pull this out. There you go. That's taken most of her web with it. Take that little bit there. There we go. These will go on a web a web frenzy when we're finished and now I want to cover everything all over again again we're going to rough this up very very little in there where it's dried out it's gone quite dusty so we're going to add some more Again, because we use the potting compost, we've always got plenty of it. There we go. Right. Let's clean this glass off first. See how mucky that is. Look at that. We've got an Avix at the other side of the glass there. In its enclosure, we're banging about. And she has not got a care in the world. Yep, we, we haven't seen 
a single spider try and hide away yet. webbing already. Right. Let's get a bit of moss. Get that in there. Not worth being too particular because she is going to cover everything. Whole lot. Right. Right. Top this up. Give it a good soaking again. If we watch down here, I don't know if we can sort of see. You see how long it takes for the water to come through? Here it comes. And this is what we're doing. We're looking at topping up this reservoir. This is what we want. It's going to take an awful lot of water because the clay balls will actually, they will suck up an awful lot of the water. And what we want is to try and keep them clay balls a nice dark colour so that we know that there is moisture within it. As they are at the moment, they're, they're like a, a light grey colour, which means they're bone dry. Go. Look at that. Right, we'll put our branch back in, which I'm sure she'll be grateful of. See how calm she is, isn't it? Lovely big spider. Right, put that on there. Always clean the front. And that's it. Right. Oh, our Versi has finally decided to retire. We can see our Cambridgei here. She's come out for a drink. Sitting there having a drink. So we'll give this one now a quick, quick clean. Now she's disappeared. I'm not going to get that out quite so easy. So, just break that up. That. We'll give that a little bit of soil as well. Not a lot, don't need much, just needs a little bit. Just freshen it up a little. Right, and we'll use off the, we'll use these odd bits that we've got so we don't waste anything. It's interesting to see how some of these Avix, how they web. Some of them are prolific webbers. Others don't really bother too much. Now this is a really nice piece. It's strange, under this light, this is absolutely green. As soon as we get it over here, it changes. 
It's very odd. Looking forward to seeing how these work. All right. Clean our glass. Now what we will do is we will water this down now each day until we get it to the, where we want it. And it will just be a little bit of trial and error until we get it just, just, just where we need it. There we go. Perfect. There we go. Well, that is it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven enclosures, all just given a little bit of a spruce up, a little bit of a clean, and then they look so much better. And we can see now, we'll, we'll work out now what kind of effect our lights have on our moss. And we'll see where that goes, see what it does. Um, and now we've also got nice clean front glasses, which means that we can um, we can keep an eye on things now. So some of these spiders that don't come out so much, things like the, um, the rufus, we don't see it too often. But we often see it at night time. That's the times you're going to catch it. But during the day, they don't come out quite so much. But we can always tell now by coming in, if we see poop on the glass, we know our spiders well. It's good. So what we've done is we've cleaned all these out, given them a freshen up. As you saw there, these spiders are not in the least bit worried about what we're doing. They haven't been affected by any of this. It's, been, it's just been a walk in the park for them. They're so, so used to this kind of regime that we do here. And um, so what we'll do now is we'll leave them and then tomorrow we'll offer them food and we'll see how they go then. And they'll probably all want to feed by then as well. I bet if we actually offered them now on tongs, they probably would take the food now. They are so settled. Nice and easy. Right. Well, hopefully the rest of the room will look like this in no time at all. And we'll be happy. Won't we, camera lady? Yes. We'll be very happy. Right then. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. A little bit of maintenance. And don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I'll see you soon, guys.